Hey, my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. How many times did you have a requirement to create a Power BI report that will show real time data but with performance of the import mode? Okay, let's use aggregations. But what if your client wants to dynamically select the attributes for data analysis? Okay, then look, let's use hybrid tables. Cool, that's great, but what if you don't have a premium license? Stay tuned and in this video I'll show you how you can mimic behavior of the hybrid tables even without the premium license. This video is also part of my Mastering Power BI Performance Tuning course where you can find more of the 4 hours of videos and materials for leveling up your Power BI Performance game. You can find the link to the course in the description of this video. Not so long ago, I was working with a client who needed performance tuning of their Power BI solution. The challenge was to enable the analysis of over 200 million records in the fact table while ensuring that the lowest level of detail is also available in the report. Great, that sounds like a perfect use case for Power BI aggregations. I was thinking of aggregating the data per key attributes and then using an import mode for these aggregated tables. Easy win. However, the client insisted that they need to keep the possibility to dynamically choose per which attributes data will be grouped in the report. Simply said, if I pre-aggregate the data, let's say on the product and store, and they want to include a customer in the scope of the analysis, aggregations would not work in that case, as the grain would be different. Ok, then let's use hybrid tables. Um, look, Nicola, we've already heard about the hybrid tables and we think they're super cool, but there is a small issue. We don't have premium. Not having premium also excludes the potential usage of the XMLA endpoint to split the table into two partitions. One that would store the data in import mode and the other that will use direct query. The same as in the hybrid table scenario, but here you are in charge of defining partitions. Oh, that is a real challenge now. So no user-defined aggregations, no hybrid tables, no XMLA endpoint. Let's see what can be done. What if we mimic the behavior of the hybrid table but without configuring a real one? What? How's that possible? For the sake of this demo, I'll use a sample Contoso database that contains approximately 100 million rows. Courtesy of SQL BI guys, you can generate one for your practice for free. You can find the link in the description of this video. I'll keep things simple and I just want to count how many orders were placed for this imaginary Contoso company. Let me stop for a second and explain the data model. Obviously, this is a simplified version of the real data model. There is a fact table data orders and two dimension tables customer and date. Fact table is in direct query storage mode because, as already mentioned, the client needs data on the level of the individual order and importing 200 million plus rows fact table with a pro license, well, it's simply not feasible. Dimension tables are in dual storage mode and you'll soon find out why. And this is how the data in the report looks. The first order was placed in May 2010 and the last one was on March 3rd, 2020. The client explained that most of the analytic queries will usually target the previous 3 months. Total records is just a simple count of rows from the fact table. Let's get to work. Remember when I told you that the idea is to mimic the behavior of the hybrid table. So obviously we can't partition the orders table. But we can create two tables out of this one. Each of them will act as a partition. Now, I hope you are familiar with the terms hot and cold data. For those of you who are not, hot data is the most recent one, where the word recent has typical it depends meaning. It can be data from the last X minutes, hours, days, months, years and so on, depending on your specific use case. In my case, the hot data refers to all the records from 2020. Finding the tipping point, the point in time to separate hot and cold data, is of key importance here. 
if you opt to use a shorter period for hot data, you will benefit from having a smaller data model size, fewer data imported in Power BI, but you will have to live with more frequent direct query queries. So I'm going to create a new table in my data model for the most recent data. This is all the data after January 1st, 2020. Let's call this one orders hot. By following the same logic, I'll create another table for the old data by simply adjusting the condition in the where clause. And I'll call this one orders called. Now my data model looks slightly different. Orders hot table contains approximately 3 million rows and I'll now switch it to the import mode to guarantee the best possible performance. Orders called uses, same as the original table, direct query storage mode, as we can't load such a big table in Power BI without a premium license. I've also set the date and customer dimension tables to dual storage mode, so we avoid all the downsides and challenges of limited relationships. Next, I'll establish relationships between dimension tables and our newly created hot and cold tables. Since our data model is now essentially structurally different, we have two tables instead of one, I need to rewrite the measure for calculating the total number of orders. I have a simple measure that just counts the rows for each hot and cold table. Let's now create a joint one, which will add these two numbers up. You can see that the numbers are exactly the same, but let's turn on Performance Analyzer and check what is happening behind the scenes. Ok, there is a direct query involved, which is expected, as we are also pulling the data from the cold table, which is in direct query storage mode. Now, let me set this slicer to January 28, 2020. We know that this date is in the import mode hot table, so let's keep our fingers crossed that Power BI is smart enough to omit the direct query table from the scanning. Ah, unfortunately not. Again, there is a direct query involved. Please don't pay attention to the numbers in milliseconds, as in reality I was dealing with way more complex calculations than simple count rows. To confirm that there is really direct query involved here, I'll copy this query and move to DAX Studio. I'll paste the code and, yes, you can see the SQL code generated by our visual. Why on earth Power BI needed to apply direct query when we have our nice little import table for this portion of the data. Well, the Power BI engine is smart. In fact, it is very smart. However, there are certain situations when it can't resolve everything on its own. In this scenario, the engine went down and pulled data even from the called direct query table and then applied date filters. That means we need to instruct Power BI to evaluate date filters before the data retrieval. And thanks to Phil Simark and his blog post on filtered aggregations, let me show you the improved version of the measure. The first step is to set the tipping point in time in DAX. We can do this using exactly the same logic as in SQL, when we were splitting our giant fact table into hot and cold. This measure will return the cutoff date between the hot and cold data. Let me show you in another card visual what this measure does. And then we will use this result in the improved version of our base measure. Here we are in every scenario returning the total number of orders from the hot table, as it will always hit the higher performance table in import mode. Then we are adding some additional logic to call data. Checking whether the starting date in the date slicer is before our tipping point. If yes, then we will need to wait for the direct query. But if not, well, let's check ourselves. Again, when the visual needs the data from the direct query table, we will have direct query involved. That's ok, but what if I set the start date in the slicer to February 12, 2020? BAM! Direct query equals 0. To confirm that really everything comes from the import mode table, let me grab this query and paste it in DAX Studio. See? Only DAX code, no SQL this time. Let's check once again with January 10th as a starting date. Zero, I love this. Do you know what's even better? 
Remember that one of the client's requests was to be able to dynamically choose the attributes within the visuals. So once I include the continent in the scope, let's see what is going to happen. Work like a charm. As long as the data is coming only from the import table, there will be no direct query queries anymore. As you witnessed, we made it. The original request was to enable data analysis over 200 million records in the most efficient way, additionally supporting dynamic selection of attributes for analysis. No premium, no problem. We managed to keep the original data granularity while increasing the report performance for 99% of use cases. Extraordinary tasks require extraordinary solutions and, if you ask me, thanks to Phil Simark's brilliant idea, we have a solution to accommodate extremely large data even into pro limits without sacrificing the performance. That's all folks. If you enjoyed this video, please click this like button down below. Also, if you want to learn more about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric topics, please consider subscribing to Data Mozart channel. See you soon!